This video is brought to you by Triple Sleeve TCG. Check out their website at triplesleevetcg.com. Hi, welcome back to another Gold Paladin deck profile with your boy Richard. And today is going to be post ban list Gurgit featuring Ravenhaired Ezol. Yay! So let's get right into the deck profile. Starter is Knight of Early Dawn Coel because it's Coel, so nostalgia, aesthetic. And uh, it's SP, so yeah, why else would you not want to run your SP call in your deck? Everyone's got those. For grade threes, four copies of Sunrise Ray Knight. Sun, Rise, Ray, Knight, Gurgit. Here we go. So, Gurgit's skill is continuous van. Uh, during your turn, all units placed by a card ability get 5k for each mark you have. Gurgit also gets 5k for each mark you have. So that's just a passive skill, so gets that extra power for free, which makes it easier to hit those 13k bases, so you don't really have to worry about that that often. It's one of the reasons why I love this card. Second skill, which is great. Uh, auto once per turn, when it attacks or when it is attacked, you kind of blast one, lay the top five cards of your deck, look at two, call them, and then you shuffle your deck. And if it's your opponent's turn, they get called to the Guardian Circle instead. So, defensive skill, offensive skill, it's just worded really great, and I love it. So Gurgit is a great grade three to be sitting on. And it's Gurgit, you know? Missed my boy. Cool. So because we're running Raven Herdezel, we're going to need Blondezel. So we're running two copies of Incandescent Lion Blondezel. First skill, doesn't really matter. We're not going to use it. It's if you have Bowman's and Gareth on the board, you Soul Blast your Crimson Lion Cup Kirf, which we cannot, because we're not running Kirf. Um, and you write this card from your hand to stand, and if your opponent's Vanguard is a grade two, uh, you could strive minus one. So then the other skill, which you could use, I've actually used it in games, is when it attacks, you call a card from your hand to your rearguard circle. So that's really helpful because cards like um, Aglavail they're just really good grade twos because they beef up just a really big beefy card from early game. So calling that during the battle phase can be helpful. And um, I mean, other than that, the main reason we're running it is because it helps you get to grade three early. Um, helps you pull off Raven Hair. Raven Hair helps you get more Excel markers. Raven Hair is also a decent grade three in general. So, but you need Blonde Dazzle for it to work. We'll only need two copies because we're going to be searching it out from the deck. Next up, two copies of Raven-Haired Ezel. So our main ride target is obviously going to be Gurgit, but this is there as a backup, and you also don't want to be having to worry about clogging up your hand with too many Raven Hairs. But if you want to run more, feel free to run more. Uh, I think two is just fine for how the deck functions. Skill is uh, when it's in your hand in, in Blonde Ezel, is your vanguard. You cannot blast one and write it from your hand as stand. So that's how you turb out your Excel markers. So, and if you're going to Excel two, you're just drawing cards from doing this. The other skill is auto. When it attacks, if blonde is in your soul, you cannot blast one. And until the end of the battle, it gets 10, 15K, sorry, and a crit, and your opponent cannot guard with sentinels. So by itself, it's a 27K beater, uh, no sentinels. And if you put Gorbaduck behind it, that becomes a, 40k beat stick without any additional power up, so that's really nice. So 40k power and your opponent has to drop minimum if they're like at a grade three, like 30k shield. Yeah, minimum for one to pass would be 30k shield. So, and they can't run 30k sentinels, so that they're going to be eating up their hand just for this attack. So it can be a good finisher. It could be a good mid game if you can't find Gurgit. This is still a really good card to be sitting on. So I think Raven Hair works out just fine. Lastly, for grade threes, two copies of Sagamore, because Sagamore is just a good card. Uh, van or rear, when placed from hand, soul blast one, draw a card, then call a card from your hand to rear. So helps proc off abilities of cards that need to be placed by card abilities like Dindrain and um, what's her name? Berengaria. Uh, Calling cards by card abilities helps activate Gurgit's skill to give them power. And uh, if you call a Wonder Rezzle during the battle phase, you can call a Sagamore from your hand. And when it's placed from hand, you know, you can do stuff. So Sagamore still has a lot of versatility. 
but for space, uh, I'm only cutting it down to two. And also, since the card doesn't do anything when it's called from the deck with Gurgit's skill, I really don't want to have to worry about, you know, having my top cards revealed and be a vanilla grade three. So two works out just fine. On to the grade twos. Starting off, I'm running two copies of Knight of Springs Light Paramore. So Paramore's skill is Vander Rear once per turn, act, count plus one, call a grade two or less card to rear and then draw a card. So good grade two ride. If you call Dindrain Berengaria, you get to basically draw and then Soul Blast to unflip that damage you kind of blasted. Um, helps proc off Gurgit's abilities during the main phase to fill your board. So pretty decent card. Um, given that we're not running Percival, we're not maxing out on Aglavales, so we are able to make up space for the uh, Paramours. Also, we're not running Mox Slash Dragons, unfortunately, so Paramour can make space in the deck. Data skills auto when it's placed by card ability. Uh, rear or guard circle, it gets 5k power and 5k shield. So good extra shield for Gurgit's uh, defensive skill and, you know, power. So it's a good 14k beater if you call it by a card ability, which not bad. It's pretty good. Next up for grade twos, we're running three copies of Oath Liberator Aglavale. So Vanguard Circle, when it's placed, count plus one, look at top three, call one, the rest go to the bottom of your deck, you don't shuffle. So this is pretty much my go-to ride target because um, I like how the fact that you can filter through the deck easier. Paramore might be a better target because this would be a better card to bounce in the later game, but if you have to ride it, it's still really good. The other skill is Rear. When it attacks, you put another card, another Rear Guard into the soul, this gets 10k and at the end of the battle, it bounces to your hand. So what's really important about the interaction with this card and how this deck function is, let's say you have Raven Hair in your hand and you have no way to superior ride do your Blondezel stuff early, so you have to ride Raven Hair on your first turn. If during that turn you are able to draw into the Blondezel, what you can do is you've basically fixed the problem of missing Blondezel in the soul by tagging with Blond, attack, with Oath Aglavale, move it to soul, now you have Blonde Dezel in your soul, and then this bounces to hand, and now you attack a Raven, and the skill goes off because Blonde is in the soul. So that's what I really like about how Aglavale can help with this deck's consistency, where if you do ride Raven, you still have the opportunity to use its skill even if you didn't ride Blonde Dezel during that game. So let's say even in the middle of the game, you rode Gurgit, and at some point in time you soul charged the Blonde Ezel, and then you're thinking late game, if my opponent's at four damage and I really don't think I can push that well, or if you know that your opponent won't have the shield to defend against your Vanguard with that you know, big power, you just ride in a Raven Hair, and you just swing for a massive power and they have to take it, and then that's how you can win the game. So I think Aglavale helps with the deck's consistency. It's also just a really good rear guard in general. So three copies seem fine. Just want to make space for the deck, plus it bounces, so you're going to be using it multiple times, so... Three seems to be working out. Next up, four copies of Flame, Wind, Lion, Wonder, Ezol. So we're actually going to be using this card's both skills in this deck, which is fun. First skill is Act, Vanguard Circle, Soul Blast, any card. So I just said Soul Blast one. Uh, retire a Crimson Lion Beast Howl on your Rearguard Circle. And you search a deck for Blonde Dezel and you ride it, and it loses a drive check. The other skill is auto when it's placed, you call a card from hand to rear. So it procs off card abilities that need to be placed by card ability. When you ride it, and if you have Howl, you superior ride in your Blonde Dezel right away. So you're already getting your Excel markers early. And then it, you know, helps Gurgit with his skill to power up things. You have an Ezel Vanguard that you might be sitting on, so running Halm kind of makes sense. So the, you know, Wonder Ezel has a lot of versatility in this deck, so of course you want to run for. Lastly, for grade twos, running two copies of Knight of Strong Favors Berengaria. So literally only here for the counter charge, but we'll read both skills. It's when it's placed by a card ability, perform one of the following below. 
You either counter blast one to soul charge or you soul blast one to counter charge. You're pretty much always going to soul blast one to counter charge because you'll build plenty of soul thanks to Aglaveil. Um, the only cards that soul blast in the deck are this and Dindrain, so you should be fine. And, you know, called by a card ability, get a counter blast back, you can activate Grigid's skill, Raven Herd skill, whatever you need for the turn. So, um, basically making it as consistent as possible when it comes to resources. So two seems to be fine. You could cut this down to one, add in an additional Paramour, an additional Aglaveil, throw in whatever card you need. If you really feel like you can get away with not running this, throw in something else. But two is just for the consistency factor. So that's it for grade twos. Now onto the grade ones, super, super simple. So we're starting off with four Gorbaduck, pretty much a necessity in this deck. It's during your turn, if you have two or more uh, units that were called this turn, it gets 5k, van or rear. Then when it's placed from hand, van or rear, you'll get top five cards of your deck. Uh, look for a grade three, add it to your hand, shuffle. If you added a grade three, you discard a card. So, you know, searching out your Gurgit, deck thinning, searching out a Sagramore. Not as fun as when you were just looking top five, boom, Percival, and you just turbo the deck out, or you look out Mock Slash, just win that turn because you found Mock Slash, but Gorbadek is still a really good card, and it gets basically a free 5k because you're always going to call stuff, at least two cards during the turn. All right, next up for grade ones, four copies of Crimson Lion Beast Howl. So we're running this because of Wonder Ezel. We want four for the consistency so that in our opening hand, we'll almost be guaranteed that we'll probably get into the Blondizzle search. Not guaranteed. It's a one trick pony where if you don't see Howl, you're not gonna get the spear right off. If you're sitting on Gurgit, this is basically vanilla, doesn't do anything. But your grade ones aren't really gonna be doing much anyways, so that's why earlier, like the previous form of this deck was literally just four Gorbaduck, four Dindrain, and like one Jerry, Jeffrey, I mean. So the grade ones are, are kind of whatever, but we needed to make space for Howl. And if you do proc it off, it goes off. And also, if you're on Raven Hair, you can use its skill. So let's read it real quick so you get an idea. So it's Rearguard Circle at the end of the battle that it boosts. If you have an Ezel Vanguard, you kind of blast one, move it to soul, draw a card, then call a card from your hand to regard circle. It would be cool if it didn't have the Ezel restriction. It'd be great in Ezel if it didn't have that restriction, but for balance sake, you have to have an Ezel Vanguard. So if you do, like, you know, want to sit on Raven Hair for a turn, you can use these uh, Howls for their skills to extend your attacks, you know, Make some make some plays late game. So they're not awful, but they're mostly there for the superior ride with Wonder Rezzel. So they want to run four so you can see it. And lastly, four copies of Listener Truth Dindrain for resources. So skill when it's placed by a card ability, Soul Blast 1. And if you do, you can choose one of the following, which is either oh it's that. Uh draw a card or counter charge. If you counter charge you get 3k. So Resources. Yay! Love Dindrain. Good card. That was it for the grade ones. So we can get onto the trigger lineup. Trigger lineup is a little weird, but it's what I like. So but you guys can basically do whatever you want. So people usually end up doing like eight crit for a draw, but I'm going to be doing five crits to start. So whatever assortment of crit vanilla crits you want to do. And then three fronts. And the reason I decided this is because I feel like because I'm not calling as many units as fast as I was before when we had Percival um, and all these units getting all this crazy amount of power just from being placed, the deck kind of lost a lot of ferocity. But if you're on Gurgit, you call some stuff, you fill your front row and your board, you got some Excel markers going, hopefully. Hitting a front, I feel like can't help make up for that because now you got a lot of, of front row units poking for a decent amount of numbers. I mean, if you've got just Gorbaduck by himself sitting on an Excel marker, he's an 18K beat stick, you get a front, now that's 28. You know, that's the exact guard of, uh, of a 15K trigger. So now 
they have to compensate for that. They say, oh, well, I'm probably going to take this because I don't want to waste two cards just to guard one single attack from one unit. So front triggers can make a difference in this deck. And I just feel like maybe three is fine because I feel like the crits do help push more, get your opponent to damage faster, because that's where I think the deck kind of, you know, loses its aggressiveness is if you don't deal your opponent enough damage early on and kind of start finishing them off quick, they're going to they're gonna get you, you know? The deck's not nearly as fast as it was in the past, so you really got to make up for it with power, crits, and just being aggressive overall. So this is the lineup that was comfortable for me. If you guys want to just stick with crits, crits is fine too. Or fronts, just do fronts if you want. So with that being said, lastly is the pretty obvious thing we're doing. Four Halo Shield Mark because draw PGs are good. Draw triggers are good. PGs that are draw triggers are good because regular draw triggers are kind of whatever. For some reason, I have one offhand here. There's, it's just a 5K, you know? Well, I have a 5K draw when you can have a PG draw. So yeah, draw triggers, they're good. And lastly, or heal. New heal, it's cute. That was it for the deck profile. Um, so, personal opinion, I still like Gurgit, but nowhere near as fun as it was before, but we'll, we'll make do. Um, there are other profiles that I wanna be showing of other like Gold Paladin variants that I have, just because Percival still is extremely relevant in any non-Gurgit deck, makes them playable and fun, and you know, and try it out. So thanks again for watching, and I hope to see you all in the next video. Bye.